Education. Analyzing Biometrics. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We have a great video for you today. Today, we're going to be diving in more on X XRPL Apex. Some things that stuck out to me that David Schwartz was talking about. Uh, it's just really been on me to showcase this to you guys as the XRP community comes to understand the importance of the DeFi on the chain, right? We need DeFi adoption, not just from institutions, but also from retail. So for people like me that enjoy making YouTubes, stuff like that, I think it's really time for us to step up our game on DeFi and really start to push the XRP Ledger's DeFi capabilities because it's not uh, it, it's not really like, you know, uh, hey, these guys are shilling something. It's, hey, this is a great chain for DeFi. Um, the continuous auction mechanism is next level. The actual DeFi um, protocol on the XRP Ledger is on the protocol itself, which is really uh, sets the XRP Ledger apart. So let's jump into today's video. We got a few clips from David here, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, some things that stuck out to me. So one of the biggest takeaways I've had so far from Apex is the fact that that David says we need more liquidity providers in the market makers on the XRP ledger. And, you know, uh, it was day three. They were getting, you know, you could tell that they were getting worn out. They had the after parties and the full weekend, the travel there, the travel back to the headquarters. And so David, you know, that he was being honest when he said it, but we do need more DeFi adoption on the retail end, right? And so that's what drew me into cryptocurrency was the fact that I... Off the top, I knew it was market infrastructure. Like this stuff is financial instruments. And what are financial instruments? Well, you can earn yield. You can do multiple things with these cryptocurrencies, right? They're not just buy and hold, right? That's a massive part of it is buy and hold. But then again, you have that yield generating mechanism um, that can be a complete new business case for anybody that wants to participate, right? We're talking about financial inclusion here. We mean that anybody in the world can do this, right? Like regardless, if you're a fisherman on a boat uh, off the coast of Nicaragua, you know, trying to feed your family, you can use these tools to earn yield and create a new business for yourself. And that is why I'm here, honestly, for that arbitrage opportunity. I love the fact that Yes, I can DCA any of these assets for the long term and make, you know, a lot of money, more than likely generational wealth because this is a new asset class, because it is set to be adopted by financial institutions globally. But we really have to understand what is drawing, what is the value here? The value here is the DeFi, right? Okay, so no, I think because I enjoy making YouTube videos and educating people that are enthused about this technology like I am, that I should focus more on the decentralized finance on the XRP ledger. So that's exactly what we're going to start doing. You guys know in our group, we do the study sessions every day, but now we're uh, filling up this new tab called the Academy. And that's where I'm going to be doing all the basics of DeFi, DeFi 101, starting with the XRP Ledger. We'll probably move into Hedera. Now, this is going to be a long-term goal of mine to really fill this group slap full of DeFi education. And you already know, if you have the time, you can get it all done in the first month without having to spend a dime over here at DCA. That's exactly how I wanted to set this group up. So no matter where you are, right, uh, in the world, you can learn from us and take this into account and create a business for yourself. Now, David was continuing on here. He said, you know, the 10 year vision for the XRP ledger is institutional grade DeFi, plain and simple. Now, the original vision for uh, the XRP ledger was these global public pools of liquidity. Now, I think that will happen. He agrees as well that that will naturally happen right over time because that's what the technology is really giving way for. Um, but we have to have that first level, that grassroots adoption first. And because we don't have regulations right now that institutions are able to engage uh, on more than just the buy and hold side, like they're doing with Bitcoin and various other cryptos, um, we have the opportunity now to get educated and learn this DeFi uh, before really the mass explosion of this technology 
takes place. So let's listen to David here as he explains to us the new 10 year vision for the XRP ledger. Um, around the 10 year goal uh, for XRPL uh, and, and what's really kind of changed over the years. In the very early days, I think my first vision or goal for the XRP ledger was this idea of public pools of liquidity that anybody could contribute to and draw off. So the idea was, um, let's say you needed to make a payment to somebody you know, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. What you would normally do today is you would find somebody who, for a fee, keeps money in Mexico to make that payment. They don't want to have money in Mexico. That's not their thing. They're just doing that to get your business, and they're paying you for like the privilege of having that money ready to go in Mexico. But there's probably people who have money in Mexico who don't need it there. There's probably some guy who owns a chain of grocery stores in Mexico and lives in San Diego, and he's probably paying 6% to go the opposite way, right? Everybody's trying to get money into Mexico. This is the one guy who's trying to get money out, and he's probably paying 6%. So it's almost like, oh, you have a niche use case that nobody else has. I'm the only, right? That's ridiculous. If we could bring those two people together, and that was that first, that first vision, the idea that like anybody who had money and didn't need it where it was could offer it to people who needed money there, a sort of global market for capital to reduce the need to pre-fund and pre-place. Um, I think that that's still happening. I think the, ch- the challenge there is I don't think I realized how critical good on-ramps and off-ramps would be to making that work. Um, the techno- again, the technology can't hand money to somebody who needs to have cash. I think the vision now is similar to what drove the inter- adoption of the internet, similar to what uh, drove the adoption of like the international movements of goods, enterprise adoption that paves the way for retail ad- adoption is I think what looks like what's going to happen at least based on you know the, the past two years. So I think the new 10-year vision is enterprise products like stable coins, like real world asset tokenization, like you know commercial lending and real estate lending, but that enable DeFi ecosystems that have things like ways to get yield, ways to manage your money, um, ways to hold the assets that you want to hold. In my opinion, this is the evolution of DeFi. Like David Schwartz being one of the originators of blockchain itself from way back, uh, the, the you get that initial vision when you learn about this technology. You get that 20-year vision as an epiphany, as a light bulb moment, right? That this stuff is going to take over. It's going to consume everything of value. It's going to be on-chain. Uh, you're going to have these robust DeFi ecosystems that anybody can borrow and lend from and use as global monetary uh, uh, borrowing and lending protocols. But to get there, right, when you get that an original epiphany of what it could be, uh, then begins the work, the slow grind to getting there. And so now I think they're starting to really get the picture that to get to that end goal of that global liquidity uh, pool is, you know, retail adoption, institutional adoption, And then you dive into, well, how do we get retail adoption? You get retail adoption through, uh, you know, making the education widely available to people like us, right? Like people like if you're on this channel, you're a crypto enthusiast. Like there's no other reason for you to be here unless you're like sharing in passion with this technology, right? I'm passionate, you're passionate, and we're here to talk and share and educate and teach and learn about this uh, new technology, and that is how we get grassroots adoption for DeFi from retail. And so that is exactly why I said in the first post, you know, I, I'm going to take it on myself to really, really start to educate on this DeFi ecosystem. There's some things I don't know. Uh, there's some things you might know that more than I do. And it's up to us now to unify, come together, share uh, teach each other and learn from each other. And th- that continuous cycle of teaching and learning, learning and teaching is what is going to get us grassroots adoption. So it starts with us. Um, and I know sometimes this DeFi stuff can be intimidating, uh, but it's really time to learn it right now. I've been in pools on a, on Ethereum, on Avalanche, uh, multiple pools. I'm in pools right now on XRP Ledger. Uh, but right now I'm really getting to the fact where I'm like, okay, I need to legitimately make how-to videos on how to use this technology. And I'm going to be filling up this section of the, of the uh, private focus group, uh, the Academy section that there's nothing in there yet, 
I'm going to start off with the basics of blockchain, then we're going to move into DeFi. And it's going to be very similar to how we do these study sessions where four days a week we're doing these 30 minute deep dives. We're going to be doing deep dives on DeFi uh, from here on out. And uh, I'm making that a point because, you know, I'm excited about DeFi. That's one of the reasons I'm here. I want a legitimate DeFi business. Like my real goal here, right, is like, I want I want at least 500k in DeFi. Like that's just where I'm at right now. And 500k in DeFi, that's an easy 100k a year uh, passive that pays my bills and more. So that's exactly where I wanted to take this. And I want to take you guys along with me. I want to teach along uh, with me. I want to learn with you and evolve as a uh, as a YouTuber guy. You know what I'm saying? I've only been on YouTube for two months, but I think it's time the XRP Ledger community really gets down to business. Let's get down to DeFi. Uh, so having said that, uh, David never ceases to amaze me, right? Uh, I've never thought of this kind of interoperability. I'm glad they were asked this question actually from one of the prominent members on X from Panos, uh, literally having one pool on one chain interoperable with another pool on another chain. As you can see here, uh, spelled that wrong. I used the talk to text a lot. And so uh, when I'm on the road and we're posting to the private focus group, uh, I talk to text and sometimes it's wrong, but forgive me. Keep it rolling. Oh, two from Panos. Yeah. Sidechains. Yeah. So I would love to see a robust sidechain ecosystem with lots of sidechains. I would love to have a world where someone could have an idea for a new, like, blockchain function and they could launch a new side chain in minutes and have it handling real money that would be awesome we're not there technically yet the bridging problem is a real one everybody's working on it i think we'll get there um and inter seamless interoperability not just for asset portability like i said asset portability is step one um but we need like communic like we need to be able to have an amm with one pool on one chain and one pool on another chain like we need that that kind of real seamless interoperability we're not there um, subnets, you know, these are, these are interesting approaches. I've talked to a lot of different people with different approaches. They're all good. Well, some of them are terrible, but like most of them are good. All the ones that we bother thinking about are good. Nobody has a great one yet. You're right back into those fundamental problems that I talked about. Like the bridge has to either make yep. a lot of money or not make a lot of money. If it makes a lot of money, I'm paying that money. That kind of sucks. If it's not making a lot of money, you know, it's not going to be maintained. It's not going to be secure. We, we don't really have it yet. So we're, everybody's working on that problem. But yeah, I, in the short term of the side chains, having two chains, the XRP Ledger and the EVM side chain, I think is going to make the community more inclusive and allow for more rapid development. And at least we'll have asset portability. So I think that's like a baby step on the way to, you know, being able to run. So, yeah, I mean, that is exactly uh, something I've never thought of, right? That type of interoperability uh, these time kinds of ideas can only come from someone like david schwartz uh what's awesome though uh is that you know he mentioned squid which the squid router is coming from axelar the ability uh to manage liquidity from multiple chains on multiple pools which is the start right now nothing is foolproof yet everything's brand new when it comes to this world of interoperability but i think over the next few years uh, we're going to start seeing leaps and bounds when it comes to interoperability. And what I love about Axelar is that they are hand in hand with the Cosmos ecosystem. The Cosmos ecosystem is technically, uh, by technology standards, further along than the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem, even though Ethereum is the most popular right now because it's like the training wheels when it comes to DeFi. But as people learn DeFi and Ethereum, they eventually find Cosmos. When you're in Cosmos, you're familiar with Axelar because Axelar is that interoperability. It's the biggest interoperability solution when it comes to things like that. Now, we're seeing companies like JP Morgan uh, use Axelar, right, with their Onyx platform. Now, Onyx is big business because they're attempting to solve uh, liquidity issues uh, when it comes to the repo market. Now, the repo market is a $10 trillion a day market. It's massive, um, you know, and uh, so... To see massive corporations and financial institutions like JP Morgan and various other companies trust Axelar with their interoperability and then knowing what we know from doing our due diligence and education, 
that Axelar is an amazing interoperability solution that we can keep up with Axelar now. We can keep up with the XRP ledger because we know Axelar's vision for the XRP ledger is to turn the XRP ledger into a exchange that similar to a centralized exchange. Everything we would use a centralized exchange for now, uh, they're going to be using that for DeFi. So the XRP ledger will be the decentralized exchange for DeFi. And that's over 200 chains that would be using the squid router to gather liquidity from and to uh, be interoperable with. So that is amazing. It is absolutely mind blowing. David Schwartz never ceases to amaze me. Um, I'm glad all you guys are here. This is my passion, my hobby, my life. I'm so excited about this um, technology uh, that really the YouTube and all that is kind of second nature to me. So I spend my day learning about this stuff, really indulging in the fat, my, the things that fascinate me about this technology. And when I find something really good, I'll clip it up such as this. I'll post it to the private group or we'll dive in deep on one of the study sessions about it. And uh, we'll just have a conversation about it and share our excitement about this space. So uh, as you can see, we are chugging along with this technology. It's not slowing down. If anything, it's speeding up. Um, the excitement level at an all-time high, passion at an all-time high. Uh, the Like David said, when he leaves XRP, Ledger Apex events and stuff like that, he leaves with a lot of energy. That is exactly what I hope that you're taking away from these videos is the energy, the passion for this technology. So if you enjoyed this uh, content, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you guys just about every day uh, because I'm learning every day. So then when I learn a lot, and then I have nothing left to learn. I'll make these videos and show you guys. So anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Tracking your location. Analyzing biometrics.